Hey there, Bible Buddies. I've got another Bible review for you today. And this one is a, another Collins Long Primer. It's uh, fairly similar to the one that we've already seen, uh, but this one is about 10 years older or newer. Newer, I guess, would be the correct way to phrase it. Uh, it's about 10 years newer than the previous one that I reviewed. Um, and the primary difference between this one and the previous one is the fact that this one uh, does not have a concordance. Uh, everything else is fairly similar. So if you've seen the other one, uh, you might want to just go ahead and skip along to one of my other videos or go watch something else on YouTube. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't really bother me. Um, but they are fairly similar. I'll show a comparison here at the end, um, but let's go ahead and get into it. So uh, the first thing you can see is this wonderful grain on the cover. You can see this Bible is very worn, and this is a genuine leather, black genuine leather, obviously black, um, but you can see it's got a lot of wear and tear. Uh, you know, and it's funny because on the Bible groups, um, you know, I, I post pretty often some kind of vintage Bibles like this, or, you know, people in general post vintage Bibles like this, and inevitably somebody will ask, uh, is my leather going to look like that after using it for years and years and years? And the answer to that is yes, it will. <laughs> so you'll go and you'll spend your uh, your three hundred dollars on your fancy, um, you know, fancy high end upper crust Bibles, um, and or you know, or fifty dollars on your kind of mid range Bibles uh, or you know entry level Bibles. And eventually, yes, uh, your leather will look like this after a while. Leather is you know it's a dead product. Yes, of course, it was made from a living animal at some point. But the animal is no longer alive. It has been skinned, and its skin has been applied to a beautiful, wonderful Bible. Um, so eventually, you know, the leather is going to break down, it's going to wear in, um, you know, it's just going to fray and you can, you can see here kind of the wear on the gilt there, uh, but it's going to fray and it's going to break in and eventually the leather will degrade and you'll have to get a rebind. Um, so don't expect that your, uh, precious investment of you know, hundreds of dollars on a, on a super fancy Bible is going to last generations and generations and generations, uh, like people love to purport. Uh, now, assuming, you know, if you leave your Bible in its in its box in a temperature controlled room uh, and you never handle it, yeah, sure, of course, it'll last generations. Uh, however, if you read your word daily, uh, I would not expect to get generations out of any Bible. You know, maybe one generation, maybe, I guess, depending on how, how, how often and, um, you know, how often and for how long of a time period you've used it, um, you might get one generation out of it. You know, if you're, if you, if you kind of stick to one Bible. Um, so it's, it's kind of weird to me when I see people who are like, oh, I'm going to hand those Bible down. And you're sure, of course, you, you know, you can hand it down. Uh, but just keep in mind that it's probably going to look like this if it's, if you're, if it's your daily use Bible, which is good. This is how you want a Bible to look. Uh, it, it, you know, all of these, uh, kind of attributes and things, uh, lend it to, um, you know, to having been well used. Uh, so yeah, let's get back to it. Uh, so the cover, yes, is, uh, like I said, it's a Collins and you can always tell Collins, older Collins, because they have this kind of like weirdly offset um, Holy Bible on the cover, you know, most people try and center it here <laughs> a little bit lower, um, and certainly, you know, centered left to right on the Bible. Uh, however, Collins, uh, didn't really try and do that. Now, I don't know why they did that. I don't know if they just had like one, uh, template that they would put kind of every Bible in, you know, like in your, in their gilding or their stamping machine, they just kind of shove the Bible there, whatever size, and then it would stamp it right there. Um, so this stamp would work for, you know, a full size Bible like this or a mid size or hand size or pocket, you know, and to kind of emblazon the, the Holy Bible there kind of in the same spot you know, with the same uh, margin on each. I'm not, I'm not sure what the rationale was or why it was like that, but it's like that. So uh, yeah, but a wonderful grain, nonetheless, uh, genuine leather. And again, you can't see that it's fairly worn there on the edges. Uh, on the spine, we have Holy Bible and then some, mm, you know, rib indications that are also worn. This is probably right on a, on a table quite a bit. Um, so, you know, these are, these are there to help uh, preserve the gilt stamping, uh, which it did. You know, you can see, still see the stamping very clearly and cleanly. However, the, um, the ribs there have gotten uh, quite quite a bit of the abuse. But there's one, two, three, four, five of them, and there's columns of the Bible. You can see there's quite a bit of wear here, I would imagine. Uh, for a good portion of the time, this Bible's probably stood upright on the shelf. Uh, don't do that. Store your Bibles flat, lay them flat. Uh, it'll prevent this sort of thing and this sort of uh, like heart creasing on the bottoms there. Uh, don't store your Bible standing up and laying flat. On the back, we have more of that same wonderful grain. Very deep, very tactile grain. Uh, fairly grippy. Uh, there is, or there was, <laughs> a perimeter line at some point on the edge there. Uh, you can still kind of see it a little bit, but uh, definitely lots of wear and tear to the Bible. I love it. Uh, the head and tail bands are white. And you can see that wonderful gold gilt, and it definitely is real gold. It's nice and lust has a great luster. Um, on the one edge here, the long edge, you can see a lot of it's worn away from, you know, your thumbs kind of uh, fanning through the pages there to wear it away eventually. On the bottom, more of that wonderful gilt. And then we have a nice um, navy blue ribbon, which is what we had in the other one too. And it's a wide ribbon. Uh, it does feel like a double-sided satin, although it doesn't, I don't know. It's not like a, like a, as smooth, I guess, as other satins are. Um, maybe a uh, gross grain, I think somebody said. <laughs> that might be it. Uh, somebody correct me down in the comments if that's not it. But it's a wide ribbon. It's nice enough, you know, for a Collins ribbon, especially this era. Sometimes they're a little, eh, you know, 
Now on the inside on the liner, we have nice corner work there from Collins. It's a paste down construction. And it is kind of a black uh, synthetic material here. And then just a black paper here with a nice texture on both. On the rear, we have that nice corner work again. And it's stamped with genuine leather there on the bottom. Let's go ahead and get into the Bible. We have our end sheet. And then we have uh, just a couple of blank sheets there. Very thick, goodness, very thick. A uh, sheet of paper there and a presentation page, wonderfully done. I love presentation pages that are nice and clean like this. Um, you know, this is fairly generic. Uh, sometimes I, or not sometimes, but I usually just prefer just the lines. Maybe if they would have done this little, uh, kind of this little frame all the way around and then just had the blue lines, that would have been perfect. Um, so I feel like you're not always going to be presenting it to somebody. Maybe you're presenting it to yourself. <laughs> Presented to Rusty Bibles by Rusty Bibles on today's date. <laughs> I guess you could do that. Then you have your family register. Births and marriages. I do love the font, though. It's a very nice font. Um, nice calligraphy there. And your desk page. And then you have your Holy Bible title page. Go ahead and take a look at the kind of Collins standard there. You can see, again, it is stamped long primer, 8VO, and references. It is not marked with India paper. And again, I think Collins had their own version of India paper. Um, it was very similar to Oxford's India paper because um, it has held up very nicely. And it is very nice white paper. On the reverse there, you have the licensing information that gives you all the specifics about this particular Bible. If you have a Collins Bible, this is the place to look because this will tell you all the specs. It'll tell you how many editions were printed, uh, the model, when it was printed, all of that sort of information. Printing Great Burton, it says down there. And we have our epistle dedicatory across from that. Then we have the table of contents and the table of signs used to indicate the pronunciation of scripture and proper names. So this is a pronouncing text like it, um, like we'll see, uh, and this kind of explains how to, how to use the pronunciation marks. Then you have the first book of Moses called Genesis. I'll go ahead and give you guys a look at that. Wonderful text. Man, long primers really are my favorite edition. I don't know. Like I said, I think in one of my previous videos, uh, it's up between long primers and pikas. But long primers are really, whew, they're just so nice. <laughs> so nice, I bought one twice. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and take a look at the features. Uh, so similar to the other Collins, you have your book name and the associated chapter number uh, of, the, of the page up at the top. And you have these running headers uh, kind of in the inside gutter. You have your chronology there. So here you can see it says BC 4004. You have that at the top of each uh, center column. Then at the bottom, you have your page number. You have your chapter indicators there with a double line drop cap. They are using pilgrim markers to indicate par paragraphs. And then you have your center column references there. I'll give you a few, kind of a quick little flyby so you guys can see what they look like if you pause them. There you are. I'm gonna chunk through it. We don't have to spend too much time on this because it is, again, fairly similar. Uh, this was a, a 10 year newer um, edition, uh, produced 10 years after the last one. Uh, so not much has changed. Uh, the long primer again has been an edition of the Bible that has been in use for a very long time. It's funny because it gave the name Long Primer. Um, I think Alan still uses it for their models. We'll go to Psalm 119, if I can flip to it. Paper is very nice. It is fairly thin, so sometimes it can be kind of finicky. I'm having some pretty good, uh, pretty good time with it now, though. It's not too finicky for me. But there's the text, and you can see that it just has the names of the Hebrew letters. It doesn't have the little characters, and that's all right. We'll take a good look at the paper. Now, obviously, you know, it's King James, so it's just a double column verse by verse. There's no special formatting or anything like that. You can see that there's very little show through. I mean, almost nothing. A very nice paper. Uh, again, pro probably comparable. It's it's probably it's probably India paper, just not called India paper because Oxford probably had a, a, you know, a trademark or something on that. So, um, you know, it is what it is. But it's, it's very, a very similar type of paper. So definitely, uh, I would not... Um, you know, speak, speak ill of the paper that Collins used. It's very nice paper. Let's go ahead and get to the New Testament. And here we have the end of the Old Testament and the New Testament title page. Gospel according to Matthew. We'll turn a couple pages in and we can see that it is a black letter. So black letter text in this edition, which I know some people are a fan of. Uh, I'm okay either way, as long as the red isn't super pink. And so here we have the end of Revelation, the end of the New Testament. 
And again, like I said, this one does not have a concordance, so this is slightly thinner than the other edition because the concordance in Collins Bibles are fairly, is fairly nice. And now right at the very last page, this is one that's giving me some trouble. <laughs> so there we go. We have a, the only thing we have at the end of this one is your uh, scripture calendar for daily readings. And it has 28 days in February. Awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. And then you have a few Collins maps here in the old school style. Kind of reminds me of candy corn. <laughs> now Halloween is coming up, or uh, I should say Reformation Day is coming up, and uh, candy corn seems to be the uh, the order of the order of the month. So we'll take a little tribute to candy corn here with these maps. But nice enough. I mean, not terrible maps. We've certainly seen some really uh, some real doozies here in these long primers. Uh, and Collins maps aren't aren't really that bad. You know, they had a pretty good color choice. You can see it here, you know, there's multiple colors, um, but they don't go heavy on the details with like the terrain details. Um, so it's not very hard to read. Very nicely done. And then you just have an end sheet here. Uh, I don't see any codes. In the back, uh, I believe it gave a code at the beginning, though. But in the back, there's no, there's no stamped codes. Oh wait, J.K. There is. Look at me speaking a little too quick. On the very last page, in the very bottom corner, there it says uh, 2690X. So there's your code. If you're looking for a similar model, uh, genuine leather Collins Long Primer. Uh, and then again, again, let me. Well, let me not, not again, but let me at least showcase to the uh, red under gold art gilt is very well done as well. It's a nice shade of red. So very nicely done. An excellent long primer, or excellent excellent edition of the long primer. Um, let me go ahead and get measurements, and then we'll do a comparison. Oop, a little more than I bargained for. So uh, this one comes in at eight and three quarters inch tall by five and oh, what is that? Just over three quarters of an inch wide by. Uh, just over an inch. It's like an in, like one and one sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, so that's where you get some of that uh, benefit to not having the concordance there. We'll go ahead and look at the font size. Give the B. I should be around an eleven point. It's about a ten and a half point versus Times New Roman. For the uppercase and for the lowercase. Right at the same, about a ten and a half point font for the lowercase. So a ten and a half point font uh, versus Times New Roman for this Collins Long Primer, as far as font size goes. All right, let me go ahead and grab the other one. And I'll bring it over now. If you guys remember, this was a, I believe it was a Morocco. Yeah, a real Morocco, which is a goat skin, which explains this kind of like very fine pebbly look uh, to the edition. But we'll take a look and compare the two for size. You can see the size is spot on the same. On both cases and they both have a very nice kind of uh, rounded book block there. I will say though this top one is the genuine leather and the spine is more nicely rounded uh, here, more nicely concave spine than the Morocco. We'll take a look at the thickness from this side and we'll flip it on the other side. It looks like it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it doesn't seem to be very much, maybe an eighth of an inch or to, to a quarter of an inch. It's not a humongous difference uh, as far as thickness is concerned. For me personally, I'd rather have the concordance um, than no concordance because um, it's not, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a very portable size um, addition. It's just, I mean, I don't know. It, it seems like if I'm going to give up a concordance, I want it to be even thinner than this, like down to maybe three quarters of an inch. Um, if not, if they're, you know, within like an eighth of an inch of each other, just give me the concordance. So <laughs> I'll take the concordance. Um, but um, Bible buddies, if you have any questions, comments, concern, concerns, please feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, Bible buddies, until next time, bye.